Hello and welcome to another video in Atlona Sales Engineering's ongoing series of live demos. My name is Paul Beals and I am a sales engineer covering the Northeast of the United States. And today what I'm going to talk about is video walls using OmniStream and Velocity. Now there's a lot of product out there in the marketplace in video walls. Also a good amount of frustration as people realize once they've budgeted for hardware, they also need to budget multiple days for a highly trained programmer to set up a graphic user interface and the coding behind it to create a situation where an end user can easily control the video wall. Now what we're doing here with OmniStream and Velocity is creating a situation where we can do an affordable, high quality video wall that we can configure in hours rather than days. So let's take a quick look at what we're talking about here. This is a drawing of the system. It's a nine monitor video wall in a lobby. And oftentimes it's used just for marketing playback and showing video from uh, cable TV boxes, but it does occasionally house meetings for the end user. So when we look at our rack, we've got our HW3 um, control gateway. We've got our VCC IR kit, which is control controlling two cable TV tuners. Tuners are feeding a dual encoder. We've got two digital signage players feeding another dual encoder. And then to route out our inputs, we've got two HDMI wall plates, and that's going to take an input from a laptop or some kind of video source. A VTP800 is running the whole system. And here's our video wall. Um, so essentially what we've got is nine of our 121 decoders, each acting as a video decoder plus a video wall image processor. Now this room is not all that large, so it doesn't require any microphones. So rather than using an audio DSP or something complicated, so what we're doing for audio is we're just taking line level out of one of the 121 decoders and sending into an AT gain 120 amplifier. And that's running a bunch of 70 volt uh, speakers. Now I've got a note here on the drawing that this particular 121, because we're using that line level output, will need its optional power supply. Everything else here is running as power over Ethernet, but once we uh, activate the audio output, we need more power to run this box. So let's go into Velocity and take a look at the room that we've created for this purpose. So here's my configuration screen, and I've already populated with um, the various devices that are going to be in the system. So I've got our encoders, our nine decoders, our nine displays, our sources, a couple of bright signs, a couple of Comcast cable boxes, a couple of laptops for input. We got our AT Gain 120. We've got our IR kit. And very important, we'll get into this in a few minutes, is the video wall configuration object. A um, couple of things on the audio side here. Um, and normally we configure all the pieces in here, but a couple of things we just got to remember. On the Gain 120, we're specifying this is where our master volume and our master mute takes place. And back on our first um, decoder, we're specifying the audio output as speaker, and that's just kind of a way to tell Velocity that that is where our line level audio is coming from. Otherwise, we got everything configured pretty much the way you normally would. You're naming inputs. We're naming alias, that's what's going to show up on our touch panel, and we're deciding whether or not to show these things on our user interface. So this is pretty much what you would do in a normal system that didn't have a video wall. And we could go right to the user interface that Velocity has created for us here and see I've got a functional interface. I got all my inputs here. I can send them down here to route audio. I can send them to individual monitors. But here's where the problem is in the, um, uh, the default configuration is that it's just showing me nine displays. They're not arranged as a video wall. I don't have a way to spread the image out over multiple uh, displays. So this user interface isn't really going to be appropriate for using a video wall system. So you may be wondering, does that mean we have to create a custom uh, control page for video wall from scratch? And how much time is that going to take? And actually, it's not that difficult. Using our video wall object down here, we have a very easy way to create user interfaces that just about anyone can make use of. And this configuration tool is extremely helpful when it comes to setting up video walls and setting up presets and ways to use the wall. The first place we go is here in the displays area. 
and you can see I've already populated it, but this is where I get a chance to take my mine, nine monitors, drag them out onto the space here, and I can go to my auto arrange and specify that this is a three by three video wall, click that and everything kind of snaps into place. Another very important button on here, and this doesn't really have to do with setting up the user interface, but has to do with installation and getting things right on site. This is the identify button. If I press this, you'll see that big numbers have come up on each one of these displays. Now, if I actually had my uh, encoders and decoders set up and connected to displays, the number that I'm showing here will show up on the display. So if I'm working on my computer here, I can look up at my wall and make sure that up in my upper left-hand corner that that is reading as display number one, two, three, four, five, up to nine, as it showed here. Other important buttons on this interface are up here for presets and what we call drop zones. Let's take a look at presets first. Now this is an area that allows me to actually specify exactly where sources go on the video wall and save them as presets so they can be recalled later. So you can see I've created three of them already. This one we're just calling wall plate one full screen. So you got wall plate one and it is stretched out across the entire screen. I created another one called two by two right with individual. So you see on the right, I've created a smaller uh, large image across uh, four displays. And then I've just sent individual inputs to the other four displays. Another preset I created was nine separate, and this is just separate sources going to each of the nine displays. Very easy to add here. I just go to my add tab. I'm going to name this and let's say I did a two by two right. So let's go two by two left. And now what I can do is just pull things out. So I'm going to take wall plate number one and stretch that into a two by two image over on this side. And then I'm just going to take, I don't know, let's say cable TV one and two. And we'll put those on the other four displays. I can now save this and it's going to be available to me on my uh, touch panel as a preset. Now what I've discovered in my career is that presets on video walls tend to get old pretty quickly. And what a lot of people like to be able to do is to have some means to sort of customize the look to their liking without it being too difficult for them. And that's what drop zones are all about. Now in the drop zones, what I'm doing is I'm creating a layout for the wall, but I'm not actually assigning a source to it. And I'm allowing the customer using the uh, user interface to literally drop video where they want it to go within those configurations. So again, I've created a couple of these already. This I'm calling a two by two left plus four. So here's the two by two image up here. And I got four individual images. I created a large image that's just stretched over the entire nine monitors. And somebody's also always going to want an individual where they can assign these uh, images out to the nine monitors as they like. And again, very easy for me to add zones. I could do a new one here. I can name it. So we'll do we'll do a two by two right here. And what I'm doing down here is I create the zones by hitting add. And I'm going to go over here and make the big zone there. I'm going to add one up here. I'm going to add another individual, another one, one here. And then we'll finish out all nine monitors there. So now that I've created these presets and these drop zones, I can save again just to be sure. Close out of the screen and go up and take a look at what I did. So I'm going to go to my launch control to my video wall screen. You can see it's going to start off in the presets. And here's the wall plate one full screen I created. Two by two right, nine separate, and my other presets. Um, on the zones, now what we've got is a sort of a graphical representation of the view that we've chosen down on the bottom. So let's say if I want to go to full screen, I'm going to choose this puppy and just drag signage out of there. If I want to change the wall plate, wall plate two, cable one, 
I can go into this configuration and let's say I'm giving a presentation on the wall plate, but maybe I still want to watch cable TV. I still want to see my signage. And what the heck, maybe I want to see wall plate number two over here. Again, I can change this on the fly. I've got my individual views. And I've got kind of my opposite of what I created before. Now the bottom line here is that I can train somebody how to look at this and how to make it work in about two minutes. Um, there are probably a lot of people who can just walk up to it and understand how to run it without any uh, instruction. Um, but again, pretty easy to get somebody up and going on this kind of control. Now one other thing that's going to make this system work for us. So here's our audio control screen, which we did custom. Um, now in a lot of systems you can set up as uh, audio follows video and if you've got a system that has let's say a projector or a main display you can set it up so that the audio that's going to the overhead sound is always going to follow that one uh, uh, video display. In the case of a video wall that really doesn't make sense. We can configure this wall a lot of different ways and there's no intuitive way to know which way uh, the audio is coming from. So what I did is I created this audio page. I've given a great big button here um, with a speaker icon on it saying drag source here to route and I've got my six sources and I can just pull them in here and you'll notice when I change sources it tells me what I'm on I got a nice gain control I could add a mute control didn't put it on here and I also gave myself a home button to take me back to the home screen so a little bit about how that works we'll go back into our room control options for a second. And one of the things is, uh, you see, again, we can say audio follow video, which makes sense for other things, or we can enable independent audio switching, which is what we've done here. We've also created a series of macros. They're gonna trigger the important commands that allow us to route audio. So essentially, here's an example of one of them. Um, when I'm switching to cable one audio, uh, what I'm doing is I'm going into the device. And the device I'm making that change on is the Omni 121 in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to input number three, which is the audio input. And now I'm specifying the multicast address where I'm going to pull that audio from. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm changing the source selected to read cable one on my user interface to reflect that I've actually made this change. Now, where do I get that um, multicast uh, address from is actually from the unit itself. And right now, the only thing I've got physically connected to my uh, velocity system is a 121. And if I go into its configuration settings and I look on session, I scroll down here to audio and I can see that the multicast um, address is right down here. So what I did is I just copied that in for that command. So I make sure I go to the right address when I'm switching. And of course, I also created macros to switch me to other inputs. Now, if I come over here to custom pages, you can kind of see how we built this page. Um, so really, I got a blank canvas. I just drew some buttons here, named them, made a bigger button, put an icon on it, give myself gain control, a home button. And the way we built this um, is we assigned some uh, drag macros and drop macros. So we're doing drag here because this is where I'm starting my command. I'm dragging this and I'm dropping it on the page. So when I am drag it, essentially I'm setting a variable. And what I'm saying is I'm going to source volume number one, which is my value for that cable one input. Over here on the drop side, I've created some logic where I say, okay, so if I've dropped value one in here, I'm gonna recall that macro I created, which was video wall deep dive cable one selected. And I've done the same for two. This is giving me cable two. For three is going to my digital signage and on down through all my audio sources. So I've got a nice audio page to work with now. 
Uh, the other thing on the um, custom pages here that's kind of nice is that as I'm working on it, I've got a nice little shortcut to launch my control. So I can double check and make sure that I've actually done what I want to do here. So we've got a nice user interface um, for our video wall control and for our audio control. And, but again, we got a couple of things on our home screen that we really don't need. So the last thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna do is go back in here and sort of clean those up. So on my user interface, I'm gonna scroll down to this home page area. I'm gonna get rid of that room on, room off button. I can get rid of that whole video section and leave myself with just the video wall and the audio controls. And don't forget to save. And now we're gonna come back and take a look at that user interface one more time and see I got rid of all the extraneous stuff. So my touch panel when I walk up to it is just gonna give me a video wall control and an audio control. So I'm going to go there, I'm going to go to my zones, I'm going to set up what I want. In this case, I've done cable one on my big screen. So when I go back to my audio page, I'm going to put cable one in the audio and I'm going to set the volume to my liking. So that in a nutshell is how we get a video wall system set up with a nice user interface uh, with very little time and trouble on our part. Again, my name is Paul Beals and I'm a sales engineer at Lona for the Northeast section of the United States. I'd like to thank you for listening to our video. And if you'd like any more information, please visit our website.